Hey everyone, Raider here. Hope you're all doing great and having an amazing day. So to my regular viewers, I have an important channel update coming up, an exciting one actually. So it's coming up in just a couple minutes, but I wanna make good on the title of this video. And that is, there is a new firmware update available as of yesterday, 927, 2023 for the Sony ZV-E1. So if you have this camera, head over to Sony's site and go ahead and grab that update. Let's go over what's included in it. All right, here's the update right here. ZVE1 system software firmware update version 1.02. And if we scroll down a little bit, we can see the release date was 927. So let's go over the fixes that are included in this update. Fixes an issue where some movie metadata may not be recorded. Fixes an issue where JPEG files may not be enlarged and played. Fixes an issue where switch VHAF area may not work correctly. Fixes a creator's app issue where the auto time correction and auto area adjustment features turn off. And here's the big one. Improves the operational stability of the camera. So I just got the ZV-E1 yesterday. And uh, so it shipped with 1.00. And I was playing around a lot in the menus. Of course, it's my first Sony camera and uh, it's a huge upgrade for the channel coming from the Canon M50. So I dove in and watched a bunch of YouTube videos. I have been for a while now, like this past week. So uh, I was going through playing with the menus and stuff. And like many other people said, you know, overheating is kind of a concern because this thing was getting pretty toasty. It never overheated on me or anything like that, but this back part definitely gets toasty. So I went to go look for the firmware updates and stuff this morning and the 4K 120 license. So I figured I'd install 1.01 and the 1.02 update was out there. So I installed that early this morning and I've been again playing around with the menu, setting up my custom profiles for switch between photography and videography because you can save the settings for both. So there's a lot of like customizations you can do in here. So I was going through the menus today and I don't know if it's just some placebo effect. Maybe it's just because it's day two of the camera and things are getting settled or maybe it has something to do with this firmware update but I swear the camera did not feel quite as hot today and I used it pretty much the same amount of time. And believe me, I've been using this thing nonstop. I actually took today and yesterday off of work so I can sit here and get intimate with this camera and get to know it. So just wanted to throw it out there that a new update is available for this. And now I wanna just share a quick update with my regular viewers. So uh, my regular supporters, I owe you guys a big apology. I owe you a huge apology for the crap content that I've been putting out lately as far as the video quality. Uh, you know, to be honest with you guys, I've been really struggling with my Canon M50 and it's, it's been a real big struggle in the studio while shooting these top-down type videos. I'm using the M50 right now and it works great when we have a regular device like this sitting on the table. But when I have my phone out here and I'm trying to do tips and tricks videos for you guys and all that type of stuff with tablets and laptops, it really has a hard time focusing on a screen. And it, you know, it doesn't matter if I go into manual, auto, if I use my uh, Nifty 50 with the speed booster, or if I'm using the kit lens, it doesn't even matter. I just continuously struggle with the M50 in getting, in getting a good autofocus, you know, in getting a, getting a good finished product that I can put out the door. And I'm really embarrassed about the last video, the 10 tricks or whatever for the Fold 5. I'm going to be reshooting that and adding a few more tips to it. And I'm going to go ahead and just uh, make that 10 tips and tricks, whatever, an unlisted video. Because I'm really embarrassed by it. So this is my promise to you guys moving forward. Moving forward, there will not be any more videos like that on my channel. Like, if I get to the editing phase and I find problems like that, I'm just not going to post it. And the thing is with you guys, I, I'm really sorry for posting these videos. You're probably wondering, like, why did you post it to begin with if you saw it was a crappy video? And the thing is, is I'm just super busy with work, with my kids and everything else that I really don't have time for redos. And, and I did that before, like the S23 Ultra 30 tips and tricks video. That's the biggest video I ever put out on this channel. And that video too, even after shooting it three times, it looks like crap. It really does. And it's heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking as a content creator that's trying to grow this little baby channel into something. And my intent is to have fun. You know, I want to enjoy the process. And lately with my M50, I have not been enjoying making videos. I have not been enjoying it at all because every video, I'm just sitting there fighting this camera. It's been a nonstop struggle. So I literally just, after putting out that last video, I did some soul searching and I started doing a bunch of research. 
and I landed on this camera. It is like the ultimate YouTuber's camera with one known flaw and it's known to overheat if you're outside and doing all this stuff and shooting long edits or long videos of 4K, things that I'm typically not gonna do much of and it has everything else I'm looking for. Look, look at this right here. So I got the, I get the camera out of the box. It had a dead battery. Pretty much, I guess, all Sony's come with a really low battery. So I charged it up. First thing I did is I threw it in manual mode. I set my shutter speed to 1 over 60, the standard for video. I dropped my aperture all the way down, and I adjusted my ISO to taste. And within 20 seconds, no stabilization or anything like that, I took this clip right here. I mean, yeah, it's a little bumpy, you know, throw it up on a gimbal or turn on the dynamic active stabilization. It's going to look, look a lot better, but look how clear that is. So that's what I'm trying to give you guys. I'm trying to make sure that I can zoom in on this device right here and never have a worry about it not being in focus. So never again will I ever, ever put out another video on this channel to where you can't legibly see the screen. I can't guarantee it'll always be perfect in focus because there might be a lot going on, but it, things are going to be legible, everything's going to be intact, and I'm going to do my best to make sure everything is a nice tack focus. So uh, I am really, really excited about this camera. I've already done a bunch of testing with it, a whole bunch of shots of trying to get my phone and tablets in shot, and I am super impressed. Like I just cannot wait to start making content with this bad boy. And I put a little small rig cage on here, which is super sweet because it's got the HDMI cable holder here because this only has micro HDMI, not the full size. So I want to keep it locked in there. And it's got the, uh, I don't know what they call it. It's like called Arkea or Koa or something like that. But this lets it go right onto my thing that, you know, goes up here so I can shoot these videos. I don't have to put any adapters or any stuff on like that. So uh, I'm going to get back to making my Samsung videos here this weekend after I get a little bit more familiar with this camera, but I just want to let you guys know good things are to come. You know, I, that last video really did have an effect on me. Like I just sat there and I, you know, I'm not going to sit here and say I was starting to cry like a baby or anything, but I did some real soul searching. I was like, if I'm going to keep going on YouTube, I got to start doing it right. So I think with this tool in my hand, cause that's what this is. This is a tool. This is a full frame YouTubers flipping dream. The fact that this even exists is like a dream come true at a somewhat affordable price. I mean, I, I got this for like 250 bucks less than what it normally goes through with the kit lens. I spent about 2200 with the lens. Uh, normally the camera is 2200 on its own. So I got it for a little under two grand, maybe 18, 1900. Yeah, that's a lot of money, but you know what? you know what, I've been making a little bit of money on this YouTube channel and I'm more than happy to just throw that money right back into the channel and start giving you guys some videos that are worth watching. You know, I just can't feel good about myself about putting videos out that aren't worth watching and that are out of focus. And I just feel very terrible about it. I'm giving you my sincere apology and uh, moving forward, I think things are gonna look a lot better, just in general, just in period. I mean, this camera is just miles ahead of the M50. So uh, next video will be a Samsung one. I uh, wanted to throw this out there for the update. As always, thanks for watching.